Hello, we're back for episode 7 of our QGIS Road to Nerdvana series. In this episode I'm going to be looking at some techniques for logging Postgres queries from um, your Linux machine so that you can see what QGIS is doing on the back end when you pr browse and pan and interact with a layer that comes from Postgres. I hope this technique will be useful for, the, for those who are having problems just trying to understand why things aren't quite working like they expect them to when they may be doing some more advanced things like I'm going to show you in the next episode where we're going to make a rewritable view in PostGIS. So, right, let's dive in. So, basically what I'm going to be showing you is um, an approach where you're going to be editing the configuration file for Postgres, enabling the logging options in that, in that configuration file, then restarting Postgres, and then watching the log file while we interact with QGIS. So on your system, the location of the Postgres configuration file may be different to mine. On, I'm running Fedora 32 here. In uh, Ubuntu, it's probably in Etsy Postgres, um, postgres.com for something like that. Um, and if you're on Windows or Mac, then you'll have to just Google to find out where they keep the configuration files for Postgres on those platforms. But the process, once you've found out where the Postgres config file is, is the same on all platforms because it's kind of a unified way of managing Postgres. So I'm going to go in here and um, I've already scrolled down. So if you, if you scroll through the configuration file, you're going to find a section on reporting and logging. So I've already been in here and what I did was I just took out the, the interesting bits that I wanted to work with and I sort of moved them to the top of the section. Um, and the main option here is this logging collector equals on. You can see it's commented out at the moment which means that there is no logging taking place. One thing you should bear in mind is that if you are logging queries in Postgres um, they will fill up a lot of your disk space. So you don't really want to be leaving the logging on all the time. You want to do it um, to do some diagnostics and then turn it off again when you're done. So we're always going to keep that off when we're not using it. For now, I'm just going to remove that hash or pound symbol in the front of that and then um, um, it will, when I restart, it will enable logging. And I did a few other options in here, which was just to say what level of logging I want to do. So I said info and um, error level logging. And this one is interesting as well. If you've got queries that are running slowly, you could go put a time threshold to say only, only log um, queries that happen less than, that take more than a minute, for example, to execute. In the log destination, you can choose different formats. I chose to log it to a CSV file. So that's just the format of the output. And then um, this one is. Uh, probably useful where you say I want to basically log everything or you can log only data definition language queries or modification queries or everything. And then I changed this as well to tell it to put the logs into the log directory here and I told it what the file name format should be for the log. So this would be something like postgres-mon for Monday dot log. Okay, so when I've made those changes I'm going to go out and then restart um, Postgres. And again, on your platform, the command to restart Postgres may be different. Um, depends on uh, how you've installed it and so on. And one thing to note is that you probably want to shut down any client software that's connected to the database at the time when you're restarting it because um, it might. Um, uh, well, you might, you might have unintended consequences by restarting the database in the middle of using it with client software. So I'm going to restart the database and now if I look in the temp directory, you'll see that um, there is now this file being created, Postgres, um, postgresql-man.csv and then I can just use like a tail command or something like that to um, to follow that file. You see there's nothing much going on, but as soon as I start interacting with my layers in Postgre in QGIS, you should see it logging the um, oopsie, wrong one. You should see it logging the um, 
the queries or the requests that QGIS is making to the Postgres backend. So you can see that um, it's I loaded the feature layer here, and it's basically asked for give me the records from the feature layer, and then gone to fetch them. And so in this way, you can see exactly what happens um, if I do any interaction in QGIS with that layer. It's always going to give me the logging information. So for example, if I go and do a query like this, and then I come back and look here, you should every time see that the, the log is updated with whatever has been happening on the back end. So again, the use case for this is that you want to be able to see what the underlying queries um, being generated are by QGIS as you're working in it, or by any other Postgres client software. I hope this little tip is useful for those who are struggling with uh, maybe trying to understand why some of their queries are not working or something like that. And um, yep, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.